Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. How are you doing today? Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, and I'm with my real estate entrepreneur, Omar Alfaro. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good. What's up, Michael? What's up, everybody? Hey, man, I saw an article yesterday, which I think you saw the headline of, that freaked me out for a minute until I actually read it. Uh, but it really led me to believe that I wanted to ask you some questions. So I don't know if you saw it. it, came from CNBC, it was quoted lots of other places, but apparently the housing boom is over. Did you see that article? I saw the article. Yeah. I, I just shunned it and I'm like, okay, I read the first few lines and I was over it. Yeah. It, it, you know, sometimes, the, I mean, both you and I have been doing this for a long time and for whatever reason, the media is either super bullish or super bearish. It's either going to the moon yep. or it's cratering, right? They, they, they make money on extremes. Uh, so first off as investors know that, but the article is all about new construction nothing to do with existing homes. The headlines for new construction were kind of scary. I'll just give them to you briefly. One is new construction sales were down 6% 6, 6 month on month, down 20% oh, okay. year on year. That's kind of a big deal. But yet prices were up 6% or values or whatever you want to call it. But again, this is right. all new construction. It was all about Q2, uh, which is over. So that would be what? April, May, June, I guess. June two, yeah. Um, you know, Q two had, yeah, Q two had a spike in interest rates. We had a spike in lumber. There was just all kinds of stuff going on. But at the end of the day, this was all new construction. So, as my real estate entrepreneur, both as a broker and an investor, I wanted to ask you, how much of your business is new construction? Uh very like, I don't know. Very little, right? One, less, 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 just 1%, maybe two. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it doesn't even exist. And when I say it doesn't exist, it's only when I sell a property that's new construction. Yes. I, I'm not doing new construction. Nope. No. Yeah. And the reason people need to hear this is if you're following one rental at a time and you're a real estate investor, the thing you don't want to do is you don't want to compete with owner occupants. Oh, no. Uh -uh. Right? They got better no. financing. 100%. Right? They get in for less down and they don't care about cash flow. That's the emotional, oh, honey, I love it. Or it's the school district or my mom lives down the street or all this yep. other nonsense <laughs> that doesn't fit on a spreadsheet. That's funny. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. But so, yeah. So when you see articles declaring the housing boom is over and they're only quoting new construction, which, oh, by the way, is like five or 7% of the market. Because existing home sales are 93 or 94% of the entire real estate market, right? Um, yep. Not, you said 94%? Yeah. Well, yeah. 94 minus six or 94 plus six is 100. That's how I get there. Yeah. 94%. Yeah. So, I mean, in your market and in your business, it's 90, it's at least 99%. And for me, I have never bought a new home other than the place I live in. It, it's, it doesn't compute cost per square foot. The, the amenities, I mean, can you think of some of these estates? I mean, I wouldn't put, like, I don't put in my market, I don't put uh, garbage disposals, for example, in my units because I tried it once. You, I you don't? don't? No. They get oh. me no more rent and they get me a ton of service calls. That, that okay. Oh, okay. It, it makes sense. Shit. Right? I tried it. I'm, I'm I mean, learning believe, something new. God dang it. Yeah, believe me. I put like, like four or five years ago, I put garbage disposal in five units. Why? Because I like my garbage disposal. And I'm like, hey, let's give it a shot. We're remodeling the kitchen anyway. Let's add right. a garbage disposal. Then, then I go ahead and do that. I spend an extra two grand or whatever it is to plumb it, put it in, all of that. Then I stick a tenant in, no rent. I'm like, eh, maybe I got the tenant faster whatever, no more rent. And then in, within two months, I averaged like five service calls per garbage disposal. Are you serious? Yeah, because people were putting- What the flip? So I'm like, take those out immediately. <laughs> like, I don't care if they're new, get them out. Because I was losing money, it was crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. I just can't even. <laughs> Yeah. So, I mean, the, the reason I say that is because when I look at new construction and I still walk new construction because I'm learning my market and I'm learning all these things. I look at all the stuff that can break when I'm in new construction, I'm like that could break, that could break, that could break. Because again, tenants aren't as uh, caring 
as an owner. It just is. No, that's true. They're not. They're not at all. Yeah. So you got to think about repairs and all of that in service calls. So yeah, it, it's, it's just, you got to realize the other thing I would love to talk to you about is um, yeah. what is the media, what is the media like in Southern California, right? Cause California is very different than the nation. And I would say Southern California is even a little bit different than all of California is the media, like real estate's going to the roof, no inventory, tons of competition, or is the media starting to turn negative? You know, I'll be honest. I don't plug into the media. <laughs> I love it. You just do your business. Um, I just take, I just watch my market, see yeah. where we're at. I love that. How many houses we have on the market, how many deals went pending, what's the days on market, Perfect. you know, and how many price reductions we start having, because that's going to be the indicator that all these other agents let the client lead oh, them. We've talked about that. And, um, and then knowing that now this is a cool part though, I'll share with you that if you're in this market, wherever you're at, if you see price reductions, or something staying on the market a little bit longer, you can make an offer that's on the market. You never know what they're going through. Call the agent up. Hey, will they take a hundred K less? Will they take 80 K less? You never know. You never know. And that's I'm what I want. You. Yeah. I I'm telling people that every day, this is the, I mean, there's been only a few times in my investing career where you could actually find a motivated seller, right? Motivated sellers generally hide. They don't want to tell you their motivation. So they list with an agent. The agent tells them what it worth. They say yes. Then, you know, it comes back and it doesn't sell. Yeah, call them up, make an offer. And some of my students are doing that now. They're like, hey, days on market in my market, 17. This has been on the market 21 days. They wrote an offer like 30% below list. They, they had to come up a little bit, but they got the deal. They were ready to sell. Don't argue. If they're ready to sell, they're ready to sell. This, the next six months, Omar, is going to be the time where if you try oh, and you do the work, Motivated sellers are going to be everywhere. There's tax changes of, you know, landlording and all this stuff. Go ahead. I, I'm telling you, like I've been seen, I, I cannot. And this is where when you start and this is what's happening. And I'll be honest with you. When you get calls from wholesalers asking you to go on the appointment. Uh -huh. And it's like, well, you're not a wholesaler then, yeah. right? Get it under contract. And then bullshit them and then try to send me the, then sell me the contract. Right now, this is all changing. Yeah. There's, I'm getting so many calls on people that want to sell their house, buy this, buy this. Can you, can you structure a deal? Can you do this? Can you, it's like, uh, yeah. All right. Let, let, let me figure this out. The next six months are going to be absolutely insane. There's going to be a lot of people wanting to sell their properties. You yeah. know that too, Michael, oh, yeah. and it's going to happen. Oh, it's happening right now. Days on market are going. You're getting the media's get so here's folks. The reason I follow the consumer is they're my competition. Right now, the consumer is hearing yeah. Diana Olick say the housing boom is over. People are going, holy shit, did I miss it? I'm going to list. Then they put it out as stupid price. The the perfect property will still sell. It's the yeah, buts and the other areas that are going to sit and sit and sit, and I'm going to be able to buy cheap. It is happening oh, right now. Dude. And and you know what? You're being, you're gonna be able to buy cheap, but you're gonna be able to buy smart. Buy smart and get freaking ridiculously if like if you're just starting out in one rental at a time, you're gonna get 30 year money under four percent. Okay. So and because you're doing this, you're gonna have more options and you start being exactly. a little more creative. I, I have a gentleman that isn't waiting in my lobby that I just got the slack right now. And he's going to be, I'm going to be buying his house subject to a 3.5% interest rate. <laughs> that is going to happen bananas the next day. And it, and it's going to, and it's going to be 20, it's going to cost me $40,000, but my upswing is 150 K check. I mean, check. And I'm going to make a payment. It's okay. Yeah. People have situations, provide the solution for them. I'm telling you, this is going to be in, absolutely insane. Yeah, the next six months. Folks, again, do the work. It's going to take you 60 days to learn your market. It's not overnight you're going to learn it. But learn your market, get a tight buy box, daily disciplines, and you are going to see amazing opportunities in the next Amazing opportunities. Yep, yeah. exactly. Very cool. 
Well, uh, any closing thoughts on this? Omar, how can people follow you? Um, follow me guys at Omar underscore Alfaro or my phone number 760-559-9945. I will do my best to reach back out to you, message you, text me. I can, you know, respond back. So closing thoughts other than that, just, uh, do you know, the work, <laughs> do the work and literally, um, just turn off your TV. You don't need to be plugging into a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. And because you will dictate where you're going to be going in your market. Okay. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. Thanks, Omar.